What you're looking at is a bunch of parts out of my junk pile. This is an old trailer hitch here. Piece of heavy angle iron. Piece of uh, round stock. And a piece of persimmon. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hollowing tool. I'm going to take one of these legs off of here and cut it off. I'm going to attempt to straighten this. I'm, I'm out of oxygen from oxygen settling, but I'll, I'll try a sledgehammer and see if that straights. If it doesn't, I'll just have to go get some oxygen. So this is, uh, okay, so this is about a total of about 20, 20 inches, 18, 19 inches of usable material. And my handle's going to sit off on one end like this. And what I'm going to do here, this, this is going to be for my new tool rest. I've got to turn it down to one inch. And I'm going to make a captive rest, and that's what I'm going to use the angle iron for. And I'm going to use a, a round cutter, because I have some scrapers that will fit the same thing. But anyway, there's, there's the start, so just follow me along, and we'll have a bottom cutter here in a couple days. Now I've got that piece cut off the trailer hitch, and now I'm going to straighten it out. I decided to go ahead and use my old press I built probably 35 years ago. It has a 12-ton jack on it. So I'm going to see if this will do it. I always like to stand back out of the way, because I have had them flip out on me. And that's a lot of pressure. You can see it's bringing it down now. You always want to bring it past the point of being straight because it will spring back a little bit. We're getting there. Let's see what we got. Pretty straight and it's bending down a little. Let's take the pressure off and see what it looks like. All right, we still got a little crook to it there, so we got to bring it down some more. Take a minute for this old jack to catch up. Like I said, this is probably at least 30 years old. I'm surprised it still works. One of the first things I ever built in my shop. All right. Got a little bit of, got a little more there. All right. I'll let it sit there for a minute. Let it acclimate. All right, let's bring it up now and see what we got. I believe we got it, guys. Ain't gonna get a whole lot straighter than that. A little bit of a place right there, but it'll grind out. Okay, step one's done. Now that's step two. Now I've got this cut off and I've got it straightened out. This is gonna be the, the bulk of the cutting tool. And by the way, I've uh, decided to call this the catfish. Catfish is a bottom feeder, so this is going to be called the catfish. Okay, I'm going to try to explain this to you a little bit. I'm going to make a tool rest, and here's the raw stock for the shaft. I'm going to turn this down to one inch, okay? So on the top of the tool rest, I'm going to make it like a channel right here. And there will be a flat plate on the top of the tool rest. Now the channel will accommodate this will set into the channel so that it will pivot on the tool rest. There will be a, a, a hardened steel bolt through here, an aircraft bolt, to allow it to pivot. The tool itself will be straight. Whatever length this thing is, let me check it out real quick. Uh, I have a total of 20 inches there, so I'll probably put uh, I don't know, maybe six into the handle. So we'll have, you know, about a 15 or 14 inch actual tool itself. So it'll go into here and it'll allow it to slide back and forth, plus, plus be able to come in here and pivot like this. 
I'm going to put a slight turn here. I'm going to drill and tap this to accommodate uh, this screw right here. This is a round cutter. I'm also using the same side so I can use these various scrapers on it. So that's the plan, my friends. The handle, I'm, I'm doing away with that. I, I found I couldn't, uh, I couldn't find my square square drilling drill bit anywhere, so I'm going to laminate up a few pieces of wood to make a handle out of. That's, that's the last step, and the easiest. So I'm going to get on with this now. Get on with making my catfish. Okay, this is going to be like a two-step process here. <clears throat> I'm going to take my bar, and I'm going to cut and lay it up here. I'm going to cut me a line. So, okay, where the red line is, I'm going to cut it off, and after that, I'm going to make a, sorry about the red paint, I guess I should get it off. I'm going to make a couple cuts here and here, but not all the way through in sort of a V fashion like this, and then I, I will bend it over a little bit and, and weld this back. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, good. Try to walk up a little bit, but that's like I said before. That's that's what they make grinders for. So let's see what we're going to do. I think I'll do all this off camera. Otherwise, we're going to have too long a video. <clears throat> now I basically got this made. I'll tell you what I did, but you know, first, you know, this is a this is a wood turning channel even though I do put a little bit of metal work in, just to show you how I build my tools. And uh, here, here's what I've got so far. I've got it all ground down. I took and, you know, cut this down, like I said, <clears throat> made the platform for the tool. And one thing you, you probably can't tell, but this has a two degree angle like this, sort of like a hunter tool does, for the cutter to go right here. And I took, and what I did is I made two slices with the saw here and here, close together, bent it over, and went over to the wire welder and welded it back up. <clears throat> and then, of course, I, I ground it and got it down to shape. So with the exception of drilling and tapping for the cutting tool, which I'm going to wait a little bit because I've got some new ones ordered. It should be here today or tomorrow from Captain Eddie. <clears throat> and I don't want to make sure that I drill it and tap it to fit those. So I'm going to save most of this video for making the handle, and the next video will be on testing the tool. But it's a little bit loud right here, I won't show it too much, but I'm in the process of turning, turning that uh, bar stock down to one inch for my uh, tool head shell. This is uh, not like wood turning. It takes a while to set it up. It's slow, it's dirty, so I don't do too much anymore, so I'm not going to show too much of this, I'll show you the finished product. This is an interesting machine, in case none of y'all have ever seen it before. It's a Shopmaster, uh, they call it a fry machine. It has a milling head, a drill press, and a lathe all built into one. Uh, it's got, you know, soft automatic feed, 
It's all set up so you can put step motors on it, and CNC, and so forth. Uh, I, I bought it when I was building airplanes. I don't use it much. It does come in handy, as you can see. So let's move on. I got it all put together. Those sawing and welding and turning and stuff like that. But here it is. As you can see how it works here. Uh, I'm going to, you know, laminate something up for a handle. And, you know, that's the way it'll work, just like that. I think it's going to be... I think it's going to work. If it doesn't, it, I guess I just needed to practice welding. But, you know, sitting the rest right here, and you put it in there, and you... Got it right here. This is a little stiff, but I wanted it stiff because I didn't want any chatter. This has just a little, but if it didn't, I wouldn't be able to do this. Well, there it is. I'm going to throw a little paint on it now. And uh, we'll put her together tomorrow and see if we can do something, even if it's wrong. Here we have it all painted and ready. My next step is to make a handle. I decided to make the handle 12 inches long, which will give this uh, tool a total of 32 inches. So, And this uh, went out there and found something to make a ferrule out of. So the handle will be out to here, 12 inches. It's, uh, I'm going to just make sure my tail stock's out of the way. Anyway, there it is, all painted up and ready. And uh, you can see how it's going to work. I guess I should have tightened that a little more, but I didn't. So, painted it so it, uh, okay, the paint's still wet. That put on yesterday, my goodness. So anyway, there it is. That's how it'll work. So I've, I've got, uh, I can run this inside the water vessel, whatever I'm doing, and from here I can, I can haul 14 inches deep with this tool. You can only go till it hits right there. 14 inches. Now if I wanted to use a different rest, I could, uh, let's see what would we have then. Well, that would be 15. It wouldn't even be uh, wouldn't even be worth the effort. So, next step is to go ahead and select my wood and laminate up a handle, and then I've got to drill and tap for a round cutter. And it's going to sit right there, maybe just about like so. And if it has a very slight one or two percent angle to the inside. We should make it cut pretty good. So there you are, my friends. So time to go make a handle and do a little turning. This is where I'm going to select my wood from. This is uh, this could be a, a tip of the video, even though I'm not going to make it one. But all this wood you see in my, this trailer right here, you see some of it. You can see it has this one. it has purple on it. Purple mark on it. What I do, local Home Depot, I don't know if they all do that, they have a coal pile and uh, they, they put a purple mark on it in the back and generally there's a little something wrong with it and it's 70% off. For instance, this, this one right here, I don't know what it cost me, but it had a little crack right here. Well, I, I just put some wood glue in it and pulled it back together and set it overnight. So. As far as I'm concerned, maybe I want to make a shelf or something. It's perfectly good. Now it just comes with two by fours, they're a little warped. But you get pieces out of them at 70% anyway. So I'm going to use. Now this wasn't part of the coal, but this is silver leaf maple. So I'm going to use silver leaf maple, and this is a piece of cedar. So the center is going to be cedar with silver leaf maple on each side, so I get a little contrast. So I'm going to cut, so cut me off some pieces here and then uh, go inside and cut them to size and use a planer until I, I get them where I want them glued together and tomorrow we'll turn it to handle. Okay, I've got, uh, got all the wood cut out and planed down and fitted. Uh, this is going to be the outside two pieces of silver maple. 
And this is uh, this is cedar. This is going to be the inside. So basically, you uh, goes here. Oops, here. Like so maybe. And here. And we'll glue it all together. What you want to do is make sure that this will still slide in and out. So I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, do some gluing, my friends. Gluing time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in here like this, and then like this. Purpose being is I want to, don't want to get a bunch of glue there. If I can help it. That's easier said than done. It might be easier just to put some glue right in here. But it, you know, you gotta have it. If you don't have it, it's gonna all fly apart on you. Whenever you start turning, it'll go everywhere but loose. It does not have to be super thick, but it does have to cover everything. This is tight bond too. Like I said earlier, I prefer to leave this overnight. I know it will sit up in a couple hours, but I want to uh, leave it overnight. It's still still morning here, so I don't have anything when I get this done to test it on, so I'm gonna start making that, and it'll be my next video. The rest of this video will be finishing this handle and uh, that'll be it. I'm not going to test it on this video. It's probably going to squeeze out anyway. I don't know why I'm cleaning it, but I am. All right, where'd it go? There it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. It's essential that you get a good bond. Now we use my fingers. I think they work best. If you uh, don't let it sit too long, you can go Go and soap and soap and water and clean them off. All right. This sits up tonight. It'll be like one piece of wood. It's all glued up now, so it'll sit there overnight, and then tomorrow we'll install it onto that right there, and well, we'll turn it, and then we'll install it on there, and we'll be done, and I'll begin to make something so I can hollow it out. I've got a good, nice piece of Osage orange out there, I believe, and my wife would like to have a tall vase, so I'm going to see if I can't make her one. So I will see you tomorrow. Well, I got it uh, all glued up and mounted between centers. I'm not real happy about the between centers. I'm a little leery of it. What I had to do was to uh, put a piece of wood in, in here where the tool's going to go. So um, I'm hoping it doesn't slide in a little bit more. I've got to, I got it in awful tight. I, I may, may have to drill it out. But, you know, that's okay. I can do that. But. Uh, I don't like things coming off, so we're going to see what happens here. Get out of the way.
screw wrist, bevel, bring it up. Sit close, maybe a little big. Use a uh, <clears throat> parting tool. Bring her down. Okay, I'm going to clean it up now. Here's the tip of the video. I'm getting ready to sand, and I know most of you probably ain't gonna believe what I'm gonna use. Here it is. This is for drywall. It's cheap, these screens are cheap, uh, and it's just absolutely wonderful for getting something really, really straightened out. I'm gonna show you how to do it. You get all this stuff like at Home Depot, Lowe's, or whatever. Got my dust collector on. You can see it. I get all these tool marks out. So I get it up to speed. I got told before. I like sand faster than most people. 120 grit.
I'm gonna, it's such a light color, I think I'm gonna stain this. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of red on here. I have to spot this dude a long way away. All right, right here, don't spill. Okay, okay I'm gonna put some sealer on it. They're dry and they just sand the sealer. I'm not gonna use any other anything else. And when I get her all glued up and put together, I'll be back. Well, here it is, all done, with the exception of drilling a hole through it for hanging. So I figure where I'm gonna hang it, but uh, there it is. Because uh, I can use this tool without without this rest on any other rest. But uh, it'll do should do some good hollowing. And you can see how it works right there. What you're looking at behind you here is a piece of old sage orange. I'm gonna turn a vase on out of that in order to uh, test this thing. I have no doubt it'll work, but you never know. It's uh, something in progress. If it, it doesn't work, I'll figure out what's matter and, and make a, adjustments accordingly. So this is my catfish. And so the next video will be on testing the catfish. It's really not a part two. So, you know, if you like what I do, please subscribe. If you don't, then don't subscribe. But I would like a like. So as always, I'll catch you on the rebound.